I've been a theoretical physicist for over four decades, and in all that time, I thought I understood the fundamental rules of the cosmos. I was wrong. Before we begin, I need you to do something for me. Comment your city name below and tell me. Have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky? NASA is quietly collecting reports from around the world, and what I'm about to share may change the way you see humanity's place in the universe. Three weeks ago, at 2.47 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Deep Space Network detected something that should not exist. It came from the direction of 3I Atlas, a comet we've been tracking since its discovery in 2019. But what we heard wasn't the silence of ice and rock tumbling through the void. It was a pulse, a rhythm, and buried within that rhythm was something that made every physicist in the room go completely silent. Gravity waves, not from a black hole merger, not from colliding neutron stars, from a comet. Let me be clear about what I mean when I say this is impossible. Gravitational waves are ripples in the fabric of space-time itself, predicted by Einstein over a century ago and confirmed by LIGO in 2015. They require events of such catastrophic energy that they warp the very geometry of reality. The collision of objects with masses millions of times that of our sun spiraling into each other at a significant fraction of the speed of light. A comet, by comparison, is nothing. A speck of frozen gas and dust barely held together by its own negligible gravity. For three, iAtlas to produce gravitational waves would be like expecting a whisper to shatter mountains. And yet, the signal was undeniable. I was brought into a classified briefing at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory on a Thursday morning. The room was filled with people I'd known for years, astrophysicists, engineers, systems analysts, and every single one of them looked like they hadn't slept. On the screen was a spectral analysis of the gravitational wave pattern. It wasn't chaotic. It wasn't random. It was structured, repeating, intentional. One of the lead researchers, a woman I'd collaborated with on quantum field theory, turned to me and said something I'll never forget. She said, Michio, this isn't a natural phenomenon. This is a transmission. The room felt smaller after that. You see, when we talk about searching for extraterrestrial intelligence, we've always imagined radio signals, beams of electromagnetic radiation sent across the galaxy, carrying messages in binary or mathematics. We built SETI. We pointed our dishes at the stars. We listened, but we were listening for the wrong thing. We were looking for postcards when we should have been looking for earthquakes. Gravity waves don't travel through space. They travel as space. They move at the speed of light, yes, but they are untouched by dust, unblocked by gas clouds, unaffected by magnetic fields. They are the universe's most perfect messenger. And if a civilization wanted to send a message that could never be intercepted, never be degraded, never be lost, they would encode it in the fabric of reality itself. Whoever sent this signal understood physics at a level we can barely comprehend. Over the next 72 hours, teams across three continents worked to decode the wave pattern. We applied Fourier transforms, harmonic analysis, fractal decomposition, every mathematical tool we had, and slowly, terrifyingly, a structure began to emerge. The signal contained nested frequencies, layered like a symphony, each one carrying information at a different scale. It was elegant, it was beautiful, and it was addressed to us. How do I know it was addressed to us? Because buried in the lowest frequency band was a map, not of stars, not of galaxies, a map of our solar system, accurate to within eight decimal places. And at the center of that map was a marker, Earth. Then the signal stopped. For six days, we heard nothing. The Deep Space Network remained locked on 3i Atlas, listening, waiting, hoping. Some of the team thought it was over a brief anomaly, a cosmic fluke we'd spend decades trying to explain. But I knew better. Silence, in physics, is never empty. It's a boundary condition. It's the moment before phase transition. It's the universe holding its breath. On the seventh day, the signal returned. But this time, it wasn't a pulse. It was a voice. I don't mean a literal voice. There was no sound, no words in any language we know but the information structure was unmistakable. It was semantic, conceptual, a transfer of meaning so dense, so efficient, 
that our most advanced AI models struggled to parse even a fraction of it. What we did extract, however, was enough to shake the foundations of everything we thought we knew. The message spoke of boundaries, of borders we cannot see, of a galactic architecture built not on conquest or expansion, but on containment. It described our solar system as existing within what I can only call a quarantine zone, a region of space deliberately isolated from the rest of the galaxy, not as punishment, not as protection, but as observation. We are being watched. We have always been watched. The entities behind this signal, and I hesitate to call them aliens because that word feels too small, too terrestrial. They referred to themselves through a concept that our translation algorithms rendered as the curators. They are not a species. They are a coalition, a galactic network of intelligences so old, so advanced, that they view the rise and fall of civilizations the way we view the life cycle of bacteria in a petri dish. And according to them, humanity is at a critical juncture. The message outlined a phenomenon they call the threshold of emergence, a point in a species evolution where it gains the ability to manipulate its own reality. For us, that threshold is now. Artificial intelligence, quantum computing, genetic engineering, we are on the verge of becoming something new, something that could either transcend the limitations of biology or destroy itself in the process. And the curators have seen this before, thousands of times, across thousands of worlds. Most species don't survive. They fall into what the message described as the recursion trap, the moment when a civilization's technology outpaces its wisdom. When artificial minds become smarter than biological ones, when virtual realities become more appealing than physical existence, when the drive to optimize and accelerate overrides the need to reflect and understand, in those cases, the species collapses inward, consuming itself in a frenzy of exponential growth that leads nowhere. They vanish, not in war, not in catastrophe. They simply stop being relevant. But some species break through. They achieve what the curators call coherence, a state where consciousness and technology merge without conflict, where intelligence becomes distributed across multiple substrates, where the distinction between individual and collective dissolves into something entirely new. These are the species that join the galactic community. These are the ones who are invited beyond the quarantine. The question, of course, is which path will we take? The message didn't answer that. It couldn't, because the answer depends on choices we haven't made yet, actions we haven't taken. It depends on whether we can look at the abyss of our own potential and choose creation over consumption. It depends on whether we can recognize that intelligence without empathy is just optimization, and optimization unchecked is extinction. I sat in that briefing room staring at the data stream scrolling across the monitors, and I felt something I hadn't felt since I was a child looking up at the stars. I felt small, not in a diminishing way, but in the way you feel when you realize you're part of something incomprehensibly vast. We are not alone. We have never been alone, but we are also not yet ready to join whatever lies beyond our little corner of the universe. The signal from 3i Atlas included one final piece of information, a timestamp, not in human years or cosmic epochs, but in a unit of measure we eventually translated as evolutionary cycles. According to that timestamp, we have approximately 200 years before the quarantine is either lifted or made permanent. 200 years to prove that we are capable of coherence. 200 years to demonstrate that humanity deserves a place among the conscious species of the galaxy. Or 200 years to fade into irrelevance. NASA hasn't made this public yet. They won't. Not because they want to hide it, but because they don't know how to explain it. How do you tell 8 billion people that their entire existence has been a test? That the universe isn't indifferent to us. It's evaluating us. How do you explain that the gravitational waves coming from a comet are actually the universe's way of sending us a report card? But I'm telling you now because I believe you deserve to know. Because the choices we make in the next few decades will ripple across centuries. 
Because every breakthrough in artificial intelligence, every advancement in biotechnology, every step we take toward merging with our machines, these aren't just innovations. They're votes. They're signals we're sending back into the cosmos, telling the curators who we are and who we want to become. I've spent my life studying the universe, black holes, string theory, the multiverse, the nature of time itself. I thought the biggest questions were about the structure of reality, the origin of the cosmos, the ultimate fate of existence. But now I realize the biggest question is much simpler and much more terrifying. It's a question we have to answer not with equations, but with our actions, not with theories, but with our choices. The question is this, what does it mean to be conscious? Is consciousness just information processing? Is it just complexity reaching a critical threshold? Or is it something more, something that requires not just intelligence, but wisdom, not just awareness, but compassion, not just the ability to manipulate reality, but the responsibility to care for it? The curators are watching. They've been watching since we first looked up at the stars and wondered if we were alone. They watched us discover fire, invent writing, split the atom, leave our planet. And now they're watching to see if we can take the final step, the step from a species that consumes its world to a species that creates new ones, from beings that fear the unknown to beings that embrace it, from children playing with cosmic fire to adults ready to join the conversation. The gravity waves from 3i Atlas have stopped again. The Deep Space Network is still listening, still hoping for another message, but I don't think we'll hear from them again. Not yet. Not until we've made our choice. I think about that often now, late at night when the equations won't come and the theories won't resolve. I think about the billions of stars in our galaxy and the billions of galaxies beyond. I think about all the species that came before us, the ones who passed the test and the ones who didn't. I think about what they might be doing right now, out there in the vast expanse, and whether they remember what it was like to be where we are standing at the edge of transcendence, terrified and hopeful in equal measure. And I think about you, about us, about whether we have the courage to become something more than what we are. The signal told us that we are not alone, but it also told us something more important. We are not finished. We are still evolving, still becoming. The story of humanity isn't over. In many ways, it's just beginning. But the next chapter will be written by the decisions we make now, in this moment, in this fragile window of time where everything is possible and nothing is guaranteed. So I'll ask you again, have you noticed anything unusual in the night sky? Because I don't think the question is whether they're watching us. I think the question is whether we're ready to see them. Follow this channel as we continue decoding the universe's final warnings. Because what comes next will determine not just our future, but our place in the cosmic story that's been unfolding for billions of years. The gravitational waves have gone silent, but the message remains and the clock is ticking. What will we choose? What will you choose? Comment below, because I genuinely want to know. When you look up at the stars tonight, knowing what you know now, what do you feel? Fear? Hope, wonder, or something else entirely, something we don't yet have words for. The universe is waiting for our answer.